Hey everybody, it's January 10th, Wednesday. You're here at the DEI Working Group for Chaos. I guess I could take my scarf off now that I'm inside and it's a little warmer, I'm scratching my neck. Um, hi, first meeting of the year for DEI Working Group. Great to see everybody. I hope everyone had a great new year and holiday break. I know I did, it was amazing. Um, really, was really, really glad for the break. I think I needed it, so yeah. Let's share. Um, for anybody who's new, I don't think we have anyone who is new. I will just say this just for the record. This is, um, of course, part of the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind. And um, we do record these meetings. So if you don't want your cameras on or off, like whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, we do use the chat pretty heavily in our meetings. So feel free to just chat if you um, want to interject something and you don't want to jump in or raise your hand or whatever so you can just use the chat and we'll we'll incorporate that into the flow of the meeting um first thing on the agenda is that we did move the meeting minutes um the last meeting minutes we had were owned by um actually emma Irwin when she was at mozilla <laughs> she's not even at mozilla anymore she's at microsoft so um yeah we didn't own the minutes so i just created a new doc and archived they're up here if you do want to see, we still have access to them for now, so, but we may not forever, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, so this will be the minutes moving forward. So, yeah. Um, does anybody have questions about that? We do, uh, I should say, we do archive the minutes, um, especially meetings like this one in our community meeting that we have all the time. These documents get to be like 100 pages long, and it's just really unwieldy to load. So um, that's why we do that. So if anybody has questions about any of that, happy to answer them. Okay. Did you start recording, Elizabeth? Did I? Did I not? I think I did. Okay. As it came up. Okay. I did. Okay. It didn't okay. pop up for me. I don't know why. Okay. It says recording in the top left of the screen as well. Okay. I was going to say, we're going to have to restart everything. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Like I see it now. Hadn't so, heard sorry, to, sorry to ask. I just wanted to make sure. I, no, I'm glad you did. Thank you for that. Because mine doesn't say a recording. So I'm glad you did because I'm questioning my own reality right now. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on since we don't have any questions about that. Let's move on to project badging. Um, exciting things happening this week on this front, I think. Uh, we don't have Daniel on the call, but he did add some questions here. We are so close, <laughs> so close <laughs> to releasing this to the uh, to the world. Um, we do have some folks, it looks like, that have, we knew Drupal, I didn't know about these others, that have um, committed to applying for a, a project badge. So I also added this one, line list, which is Hugo's project, for those of you who have been on that email thread. Um, so we have folks who are ready to get their badge. Um, it's just going to be maybe the next day or so that we're going to be announcing that it's kind of open does anybody on that team want to add anything or um we could address some of these questions daniel had i i can address i could address the uh github uri error um okay. i know i know enoch is um going to be looking that with at that he is detained with uh, all the transitional things associated with coming to the United States. So um, things are running a little slow this week for him, but I trust he will get to it when he's ready or able. Um, and then for the resolution on when, where that will be maintained, I think we have um, decided that, that just maintain us, um, owners can apply for the badge. So, that is already there. I see someone added the link to the conversation thread. So I don't know if it was answered in that thread. So but we have resoluted that. And just maybe just to give context to others, um for project badging, um we we had originally um the the, the initial flow was that maintainers could apply, um, but but with the way the bot is set up to run, 
um and the functionality we can only admit like maintain owners of the repository so um to apply and the process is really straightforward um where they can um sign in um or authenticate with either gitlab or github and um you know search the repository or still like just put in the particular repository they want to badge and click on it and the the bot does the scanning um and sends back an email to the person that um initiated the owner that initiated the process. So that's um I, I know Ria is here. So I, I don't know Ria if you had like any questions about that. I have not gotten that far, so I don't have any questions yet. Okay. Okay. I'm no. just trying to get the precepts baked in at this point and proselytize the ideas. Okay, no worries. At any point, if you have any questions, you can let us know. Um, and then on the update on the Google form for self-hosted projects, um, yes, I think yes, that that question, the answer to that question is yes. We um originally I talked about um adding it to the to the um, apply for a badge page so that um, projects that are self-hosted could see the form link and then submit the form and they would manually for now would manually review review the um, submissions and send them the badges via email um, and then maybe in the future we're looking at automating the process so Yes, it will be added and automating the process in the future. We found that form. Uh, we know where it is. <laughs> I remember we were looking for it the other day. I think you made it, Matt. Yeah, I'll go look. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're the one that should know, I guess, where it is. Um, yeah. Oh, no, and I was I don't... talking about the self hosting form, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We we did decide we were going to add that as another button on that page, right? Is yes, yeah. right? another button. Yes, another button. And I realized we haven't actually come back to the community to show them the new website or something. So this is, I added the link. Yeah, do can, do we want to see it? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, can, we can go through it. So this is what we've been working on um, and that we're going to be releasing this week probably. Um, so everybody knows, maybe, maybe you don't know, um, we've been doing event badging for quite a while, um, just basically asking event organizers to answer um, questions about their event based on um, chaos metrics we've developed here in the DEI working group. And um, they apply, it's all done openly, we issue a badge based on how many check marks they get, essentially, how, how much they're doing um, to provide an inclusive event. So then we have now included project badging for the same thing, but it's a little different, obviously, because events are different than projects um, in many ways. Um, so this has been a, a something that Chaos has been working on for quite a while, um, and we're about ready to release it. it. It all centers around this file right here, the DEI.md file, and um, it looks like this, which we're asking projects to act, to basically publish publicly where or how they uh, uh, attend to these four metrics from chaos. So the bot will scan their DEI.md file and then issue a badge if they have successfully given information about each of these. I also see that I don't that extra section isn't in here. Remember, we only put it in the guide. Right, we did, didn't we? Yes, we did. It was so long ago, that conversation. It was like, oh, yeah, a whole day. Like one day. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. It's hard to think about everything at once. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so this is what this is what this looks like. And this is what we're talking about. Here's the guide that uh, we will point people to so that projects know how to fill that out and what we're talking about when we when we say project access. Some examples for them to use. And then if they're doing things other than those four, we have a space for that as well. Or if they have plans to do things other than those four. 
So yeah, that's it. I would also say, I would also add to this, where'd it go? Uh, this comment by Daniel from GitLab. GitLab itself is also gonna be getting a badge, which is amazing. So um, yeah, we're excited about this whole thing. And again, we're gonna release this officially in a few days. So yeah, keep your eyes open. What else, what else should we talk about with this? People who are on that team, what am I missing? Oh, so the list of examples has not been released yet? No, it has. Yeah, that oh, no. is open. Um, let me get back to that. Where was that for you? Yeah, it's under the guide. So I'll drop this link here in chat. That's the guide. And then the template that you will use to copy as a starting point is here. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Ria. Cool. And just a shout out to everyone who's worked on this. Um, a lot of people have, and yeah, Ruth, Kingsley, Enoch, many others. What else? Anybody want to add anything else? On the phone. The self hosted oh, form. Yeah, it's right there. It's right where? Over here? Yeah. So this is for people. Okay, so when we go to, let me go back to here for a second. So we do apply for a batch. This is what it looks like. And we have login with GitHub or login with GitLab. We're going to have an extra button right here that says, I am a self hosted pro project. Um, and then it'll point to this. So if they are. Yeah, this is to edit the form. So we will want to make sure we send this, this form instead. Yeah, I'll just add this to the minutes instead. There we go. Um, so they'll just fill that out and then we'll just process those manually. Depending on, how, and actually we do have a few badgers on the call, depending on how many we get, if we get a ton of these, we may enlist the help of some of our event badgers to help manually review these. And of course, we will go over what that means and how to do it. Um, right now, I think it's probably just going to be like Matt, myself, maybe Sean, Ruth, you know, people who have been working on this project that will mm -hmm. manually do these. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't suspect we're gonna, we'll get a ton, but hey, you never know. So the self-hosting GitLab ones, is that just GitLab Enterprise? GitLab or GitHub Enterprise, yeah. Or I guess if somebody had their own Git server, completely separate. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's a feature for accessing those URLs that we could probably use to automate this in the future. Yeah. Is there a reason to specify Git when? If there's a non-automated process, they could actually just come from any community with any sort of storage for their code. Good question. It could it could be anybody, really, right? And there's no reason well, to say GitLab or GitHub, right? True. They'll just self-host self their code. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. So we just change it just now? Yeah. For the self hosting form, yeah. <clears throat> what does that sound like? Like that? Should I capitalize here? Please, if you're playing when using self hosted software development and version control solutions. Okay, if you're using web hosted solutions. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure you, yeah, okay, yep. That looks better. Yeah, great. Thanks, Richard. Great suggestion. Do I have to save this? Does it save automatically? It saves automatically. Yeah, okay. Cool, anything else on this that we wanna talk about? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
we'll um, pass these questions along or answers along to Daniel, I guess, in Slack. Maybe he's here. He's here. Oh. All right. I, I just got on. I got the baby down for the nap. So I have. Yay. On. Awesome. And you decided to not nap as well and come visit us. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> for a little bit till the next call. I have it in 10 minutes, but. <laughs> um, so we added your answers here. Um, did you want to say anything about these uh, folks who have already expressed interest? And just that there's a lot of excitement um, from the other projects we've reached out to so far. Um, you know, they're going to try to get project statements ready and even submitted if they can, like at least two of them in the next week or so. Um, otherwise, we're telling them just their commitment is great, um, not to rush. And um, we're going to include all of them in the blog announcement that we're hopefully set to get out at the end of January. <clears throat> uh, and then we're hoping that that will sort of drive more um, more projects and partners to get involved once they see like who's starting to to participate. Uh, and then we're trying to collect some statements from from these projects as well about the initiative, about their interest, about what you know what this could impact for their communities. So I think overall, it's just been great to see this kind of um, immediate reception. Especially great for us. <laughs> like, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, right. Thank you for yeah. all your advocacy and your, you know, your work here. It's just, it's just amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Yeah, we're more than happy to, you know, to participate and to partner up here and um, just get more projects involved in the effort. Um, and then we did have. Uh, so here's the form. Oops. Where's the form? Here's the form that we have. So we are just going to add that as a button. And we actually just changed this. Let me just refresh. We just changed that to this. That's anybody who's self hosting their code base, wherever it might be. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Awesome. And then maybe the last thing, Daniel, is we are asking owners to do the submission. And our the, the thought was that it only takes like two minutes to actually do the application, you know, like to go onto the site and log in and point to the repo that has the DEI.md file. Anybody can make the DEI.md file, of course, but just the owner has to do the application. Okay, great. I'll, I'll pass that along to the other projects um, and I'll notify our, we have like two owners of our GitLab main project that, okay. that can have submitted. So okay. when, when, when the site's ready, I'll have one of them do that. Perfect. I think just an extra bit of context is that it does provide an extra check that the owner is like aware of it and approves it and you know kind of signs off on that DEI.md file. So it's just an extra check that somebody isn't just posting it out there and then like the owners haven't even seen it. So yeah, that was our extra piece of context there. Gotcha, thanks. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Is that the end of our agenda? It is. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> or we're starting our training program for our chaos meetings slowly. You know, we don't want to jump to 45 <laughs> minutes or 50 minutes right out of the gate. You know, we want to work up to it. Oh, I do know something. Well, I'm not ready to share that yet. I think um, we are going to work on. So the, the question of this whole yeah. badging actually brought up the chaos is going to run through it as well and badge ourselves, which <laughs> seems weird, but that's okay. Um, we want some place to put that badge. So we were under um, our about, we decided, I think, or maybe community, we couldn't really decide. We're gonna do just like a DEI within chaos and just list all of the efforts that we, we are putting forth towards diversity, equity, inclusion. And that we'll put the badge there and point to our DEI.md file. And then we'll include whatever else we decide to include. So if people have ideas on things that we should include in that file, um, let me know. I just started it, and the only thing I talked about was the badge. So, yeah, it's a good start. It is a good start, right? <laughs> Low hanging fruit. That's what I'm all about. DEI. It might be a little early for this, but at some point, it would be a good selling point, I think, to be able to provide metrics on projects that have a good DEI profile and contributors they have before and after they embrace these concepts or embrace the badge 
Now, it may be that there are projects that are very DEI friendly and just don't have the badge. And so this is going to be a tough thing to chunk out metrics wise, I think, because it's comparing apples to trucks. But I like that apples to trucks. Maria, your your the point is well taken, Richard. I do see your hand, so I'm just responding to to Ria. Um, point is well taken. We have actually we've thought about this, like doing some pre and post research on particularly around the DEI.md file. So speaking with communities, I don't it, pre would be really hard because we'd have to identify communities that are thinking about doing it and then ask them a series of questions. Um, but I think we could at least do it post and just kind of ask the, you know, say the community managers to reflect on if they think this has made changes within their community. Well, I think we could get some pretty useful pre-information when a project just first applies for the badge, because when they get the first one, they're not likely to have done a ton yet, right? So it's it's intended to be kind of an advisory process where by doing it, they think about these things. In some cases for the first time. All right, Richard. Sorry if this is back a bit. Um, I don't have the full context for this discussion about owners only applying for the badge, but a lot of communities, the DEI committee are only authorized to do certain stuff. And so I'm not saying that they should be allowed to apply because I think owners should basically have signed up from the DEI communities before applying. Otherwise the DEI could, committee could apply and then the owners are actually bad people, et cetera, et cetera. I've seen it happen before in other, other open source communities. I don't mean to say bad people or shame or anything, but I'm just saying it makes sense. But what I would like to have is language to help DEI community members who would like to apply to talk to the owners or to the steering committee, et cetera, to make it easier for them to raise it to the owners to say, you need to apply and this is why. Um, I don't think it's a huge ask for us to build, like that's just a paragraph or something maybe, but it just might be useful for basically bridging that gap so that it doesn't become a stumbling block for anyone who is on the DEI committee. Of a project. Does that make sense? It does. I'm thinking yeah, it Elizabeth, like a good you idea. open up badging again, <laughs> that link. So like it would be something here, maybe not on this page, but like on the DEI.md file page, but it could be say like how it works or DEI batch. Somewhere in there, we could either add a new link like working with working with the project owner, something, I don't know, something, it, I think in this space though, could be helpful. Or even something simple like, so you're not in the DEI committee and you don't understand and you just got here. Here's what this is for and why it's important. Yeah. And here's how to talk about it. Just something to help out people when talking to people who don't have the context. Sure. I think we can add it in that space. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I think um, even maybe some of the blog announcements and such might be helpful here too in sharing with other projects. I mean, I know our focus is really on why it's important and why you should get involved as a pitch to open source projects. So maybe just like we can have have a page about like how to share if you're whether you're a maintainer or a contributor to a project and you want to get that project involved in the initiative, some resources to send, some way to pitch it to make it easier to present so you don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel. Pitching it is the context from which I had this thought it was like, how do you pitch up? How do you pitch sideways? Um, and what resources can we provide to help people do that? I'm thinking um, from Richard and Daniel, if you go back to that page, Elizabeth. So um, yeah, the how it works. I think this might be a good potential page because a lot of it is like the how it works is build your DEI.md file you know, put it somewhere, apply, and then tell everybody in your community that you've done this. But I, we could probably have something early, which is like include others in this conversation and just kind of talk through it right at that spot. 
Yeah, and I don't know that we, we, I feel like we have talked about this a lot, maybe just internally, but it, maybe we should have just like a why, why it matters page, um, you know? Yeah. Like we know why it matters. And I feel like we've talked about that a lot, but yeah, just having that as an extra page too might be helpful. I, I heavily agree with that. I think that's a great idea. Um, also, what's at risk if you don't have it? One of the main resources that I've, I've been trying to use for the why it matters has been the Linux Foundation's research on DEI and how it's impacted open source communities. And then like linking to that report from Linux Foundation from a couple years back um, and, and those infographics. I think that's a, a helpful resource to kind of visualize and see some, you know, from, from a major name, um, some, you know, some study that is, is showcasing why, why, the, why, the, why the, the problem of DEI exists in open source and then sort of transitioning into the chaos badge as a, you know, a means to, to make more projects aware and, and to actually work on their coming with their own statements. These are all such great, 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 great suggestions. Thank you, everybody. Anything else that we want to add to this page or something that's missing? Do we, what do we have under FAQs again? Do we have a, yeah. Okay. Maybe we could even also add a why. <laughs> Seems yeah. pretty sensible right there. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> if we're if we're on that topic sorry for opening up a can of worms here oh it's great um so i was raised evangelical which informs a lot of my opinions about how this sort of stuff works um so why it matters is really important but also how do you convince your friends that it's important for them and not for your project is another thing so if we're trying to be agents of social change we have to think about what tools do we provide to make it easy for people to say to another project? I think it'd be great if you had this and I, I can help you with it. So tools to enable help, right? Um, not just to enable for my project, but to say, oh, what can you do to make it something that's useful? And is there any sort of way we can praise or, or showcase people who are able to do that work so that we don't have to do all that work? Does that make sense? It does. It's, um, it's a much bigger topic than I think we have time to cover today. I'm just thinking around like, how do we ensure that it grows and people want to share it as opposed to just saying chaos has built this, just check it out. Totally fair. Richard, do you think, so we plan to have um, a list of badged projects here. Do you think that is, I mean, it's helpful, but do you think that that's enough or do we need more? I, so I think that's great for showcasing people who are already here. Mm -hmm. But I think there's another topic around um, how do you easily share with other people that you think they should also be here in a way that's non-confrontational, mm -hmm. um, in a way that enables them to pick up the baton and do it in their projects as easily as possible? What resources can we provide beforehand? What thought can we put in beforehand to make that easy? Things like uh, pre-worded messages, pre-worded LinkedIn posts. Um, Things like tools you can do to start conversations with peer groups of coders who are in other projects. Um, things like documentate, like, I, I don't know whether a page would make sense because they had to share it elsewhere. I'm just thinking like, how does that normally happen? And just show showcasing where on here, um, it's like an extra step, right? You. I just, I, I want to make it more easy to be viral. Um, again, it's a bigger topic, which is, is also another way of me saying, I don't have all the answers here. I'm just realizing that I'm not sure that this is on the page right now. Yeah, I know, I agree. It's almost like setting up um, like an evangelism kind of, or advocacy ambassador program, like whatever you want to call it, but something like that, where you're basically giving people the, yeah, the tools to just pass it on and, 
yeah. Well, the, yeah, the, the phrase evangelizing is longstanding in the product marketing yeah. universe yeah. as well. So I understand exactly what you're talking about. Would you like to be the evangelist, Richard? <laughs> I, I would not at the moment, <laughs> but I'm happy to help think about how to make other people, uh, particularly early stage open source contributors who have passion for this sort of work to enable them. Fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. Thank you know, you. something else that I think we want to think about, maybe not now, but in the future, is how we share what folks are doing in their DEI.md files with each other. Like, because I think that there's a lot yep. of cross, cross project um, interaction, and I'm not sure how we can play that role, but I would love to see us do that. Daniel, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Well, great points from Richard and, and also from Elizabeth there. Um, I think one of the main things I've seen projects get really interested in is that it's not a copy and paste of like a set DEI statement. It's you're asking your individual project to actually reflect, look at yourself as a project in the community and come up with your own tools and efforts that you're doing. And that's like really different than a code of conduct. So I, I want to kind of like highlight a way of how other projects can share what they've learned, what they're, you know, what, what metrics they're tracking, what efforts they're putting into their statements, how it's working out, um, almost like a way of sort of having a discussion. So it doesn't just end with making the, making the badge and getting the badge, but then you can talk to other projects, learn from other projects, and we can all sort of improve with each other that way. And, and then that's like a next iteration, another big step, but, um, Maybe it's just something to think about for the future. So I think one way of taking that and running with it, which is something we could do now, is in the in the website we have for DEI um, for the forum, say after you've been badged, what's next? So what are the steps that we want you to do? Or that would be really cool if you did. So one of them would be blog about what's different about yours and about your process and then share it and then maybe use this hashtag in the in the Fediverse um, just so we can link them all together so we can see them. You don't have to, but it would be nice. Um, that sort of thing would be would be a cool small section. Sean, I think you're next. Yep. Oh, I just want to draw attention to a comment I made where we uh, actually will be listing all the projects on the website. And um, there'll be other badging levels that help people think about what's next as well in the long term. So if you go to the project badging website, you'll see a list of already badged projects and you can sort of click on the ones that you're familiar with and look at how they went through the process or what their DEI.md file looks like. Also might be interesting to have a a separate badge of some sort that comes out after a year or two. So after you've updated your DEI thing, you can say we have the evergreen DEI badge because we've updated it a year later or two years later or three years later. That's a way of showcasing. Ever more. Yeah. DEI badge. Exactly. Yeah, we do have the other levels of badge that we get to develop. Um, we're starting with the bronze level for now. We have like the gold and uh, silver, gold and platinum. So like we haven't developed those levels so we can look into um, what that would mean. But yeah, thank you for the feedback. It's really good. We're gonna be de develop, sorry, Kevin, just real quick. We are gonna be developing these other levels in this working group here. So if that's something that's of interest to anybody here, is like what what metrics should we include the next time and what's important and um that's where these conversations are going to happen so go ahead kevin uh i'm not sure what decisions were made on this now but when we first started doing this the idea was that they would review you would you would do the review every year so it's it's not a badge that should exist indefinitely this is something that the the, the project should be doing every year it's just a take some time reflect on your dei and and do it again But I'm not, I'm not sure if that's outlined in the process currently. A 
about a year, it says. Okay. Platin platinum is misspelled. <laughs> it's platinum. It's the it's the new metal for two yeah. two million records. If you go two million double platinum is now platinum. It's a it's, it's this new element we discovered. Only you can only get it at chaos. That's the only place. Yeah. So to these points, I would just like I I think that these would be something that we would address after the release this coming yes. release. Hundred uh, percent. Agree. Okay. Yeah, these are great suggestions though for for the future. And I don't even think I mean like yes, we want to kind of just get this out the door, but you know, like these things I think are something we could easily add. Like that's not a hard thing to, you know, just include that in our emails. I so, agree. Yeah. This part I think is going to be tricky for us, this stuff, the how to share elsewhere, just cuz I don't think that any of us are experts in that. Um, but the why it matters, we could also add that pretty easily, I think. I, I think those two should, um, I, and I, I feel like a bit of an outsider, so sorry for speaking so much. You are not an I, outsider, no way. I feel like those two should maybe be written before the release, because otherwise it limits the possibility, the scope of the release. So yeah. if you make it easier for people to share the release, as opposed to we did this thing, oh, I saw this thing being made, or oh, I really want this thing to be done in my community and you should do it in your community. If, if we just spend, if we time buck some time for that, I think that would be really useful. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be a couple paragraphs maybe um, or as part of the process of the release plan, right? Um, I don't know if there is a release plan for this, whether it's just going to be open at some point or whether we have scheduled social media posts with different people posting on different days for the next month or something. Um, Oh, that's a neat idea. Yeah, we're not that organized. Which <laughs> cool, we could be. Okay. We, we've tried in the past. Let me tell you, we have tried, but it just isn't really the reality. Is not. It's not our thing. But, but the call for papers for the open source summit in Seattle, the Linux Foundation's open source summit, closes in about four days. Have you submitted a a proposal to talk about DEI and the DEI badging there? I have not, I can say. Well, you got four days. <laughs> I'd be surprised. I I'll be surprised if nobody from this group has, but if not, somebody should. Could could I make a suggestion? Which is a four days sounds good. So that's actually really good. Maybe in the next couple of days, if anyone wants to, we could have a 30 minute uh jam doc on a on a Google Doc just to just to plan a release schedule for this. Um sure. Yeah, I'd be available for that if others would be interested in, in helping me work on that. But if if, you, if no one has the time, that's okay. I'm just thinking that that might be fruitful. I do. I think it might also be good if we could reach out to Nicole Huseman because she's been thinking about how we can improve marketing in general for for chaos and and sort of outreach kinds of things. And so she might have some some insight. I know she's not in this meeting right now, but I think it'd be good to reach out to her. Dawn, could you reach out and see if she's available in the next in the next um couple of days and see if we could schedule a time? Yeah, I'll um yeah, I'll ping her in the Slack channel. How's that? That way everybody can see it. Perfect. Sounds great. And Daniel, you said GitLab is doing their press release at the end of January. Is that that's right? Yeah, so we we're trying to get the OSS partners to be a a part of that. So it's trying to give those groups like Drupal, Good Docs enough time to put things together. Um, and then I time for the blog editorial team to kind of finalize that and, you know, get a scheduled date. I think I'm targeting the end, like the, that final week of January, I forget the dates, but um, if, if things got sped up at all, I just want to also make sure that things are working. I know with the site, we're still kind of waiting on a few things. So don't want to make any announcements. And then a project tries to apply and, and can't. So that was kind of the other half of that was to make sure everything was, was functioning before making any announcements. I think we're yeah. just waiting on the URI redirect I mean, thing. I yeah. think this is the last bit. Yeah. And then yeah. any and, and, cleanup we can go through again with like a fine tooth comb. And the database has been cleaned up from the all the tests that we had done. Yep. Yeah. It's all yeah. 
it's all ready to go. Um, so and then I, I know guess... we had also oh, just one real more. I know we mentioned doing manual reviews for the self-hosted projects. Do we have a process in place for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, submitting the form, and then but I know we mentioned like a training of some sort for people to sort of review. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we need to be that uh, heavy with it yet. Um, I think that between Matt, Sean, Ruth, myself, we can mm -hmm. handle any of those um, yeah. amongst ourselves. I don't think it's okay. a big deal if it does become you know unwieldy then we can certainly include our badgers and i can throw together our training session for them but um yeah i think we're good okay uh my, my question to you daniel then is when when should chaos start talking about this stuff i don't want to like good to kind of uh yeah we could try to get in sync about that too or make a I mean, again, we're targeting at the end of January, so it sounded like you were sort of in the same time frame with the, I think you had originally said January 19th. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's yep. still okay? Okay. I mean, we can push our date. That was just a kind of a a random yeah. date that we picked. <laughs> yeah. Trying to bring up a calendar. So, um, I mean, basically what we wanted to do is over the course of the next like week to 10 days, is work with the, those projects that you had listed above Elizabeth mm -hmm. just to make sure everything goes well if they have questions so um, ourselves and GitLab as well going through the process and so we just wanted to to kind of do that we've been doing our own testing but we really haven't worked quite directly with communities yet and so following that and the issuing of the badges to those communities is when we were kind of thinking to go public. So that's way less organized than what you're talking about, Richard, but that was at least our yeah. time timeline. I have someone at the door, I'll be right. Okay. Uh, well, so as, I guess a, as a possible suggestion, do you want to push the January 19th back just a little bit to yeah, give yeah. a little more time? And then yeah, yeah. that allows some planning out for like a release schedule of sorts? Yep. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think there's some there's an unexpected delay this week with uh, fixing that URI. I apologize for that. Just can't be helped with stuff. That's okay. It's okay. Why don't we just say the twenty sixth? Twenty sixth. Okay. This will be great because it'll be right around FOSTEM and ChaosCon, and we yep. can talk about this up with them. Um, I will be traveling on the 29th and 30th. So I just want to make sure that I, because I would like to be around in case there's questions or, you know, just generally available for people. So um, as long as we can get it in by, by then would be great. We'll just bold that so we kind of know. Cool. Did someone, sorry, I just want to make sure we follow up on this. Did someone take the action item to put together the proposal and submit it for OSSNA? I mean, I know we want to collaborate, and I kind of pinged Nicole in the channel, but but somebody's going to have to submit it before I think it closes on Sunday. So we I, really have I, a can, day. I can submit it because they're not yeah. really difficult to put together. And no. I don't yeah, think it doesn't need to, to have all the details. It's like a twelve hundred no. limit. There's only so much you can say. Yeah, I, I, I think I can copy and paste a lot of what we have on the website <laughs> as well. Yeah, <laughs> I think the content is there for sure. Awesome. And we are going to have a, a booth at OSSNA, so um, there'll be some chaos people around. Matt, if you don't want to give that presentation by yourself, you know, if you want help, I'm sure there's others that can help. So yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I th yeah, I think a group like a panel might be even better than a talk. But seems like there's much less preparation with a panel, so I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I think they're more engaging, honestly, for communicating programs Same. like this Same. okay yeah that'd be cool i mean honestly if i mean i could potentially try to reach out to folks i could reach out to daniel like for a panel yeah like reach out to daniel enoch um folks from drupal yeah whoever yeah. else okay make sure yeah Making a nice oh, thanks, diverse Richard. group of people together for that. I think it's a good idea. 
Richard says he's also happy to do a podcast too. That'd be awesome. Yeah, just let me know who yeah. should be on it, and I'd be happy to interview them for like a twenty minute, just like release podcast on the okay. day we release it. Um, I'm gonna move this down here. I'm gonna drop off before the next meeting. So. Oh yeah, we are at time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Here. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Turned out to a great meeting. I love it. Yeah. Bye, all. See you later. Have a good rest of your week.